Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my April TBR, and to be quite honest, I hadn't planned to do an April one because I do know that I had a couple TBRs in March. However, the plan changed when I discovered two readathons for the month of April that I am super jazzed to take part in, the Linguathon and the Mythathon. So, here we are doing a TBR for both of those readathons. I'll put all of the information on both of them in the description box below so you can certainly check it out. But why don't we just dive right in? The first of the readathons that I want to talk about is the Linguathon, which is hosted by my friend Noelle and her fellow linguist Annie. And the crux of the readathon is really to encourage people to read more books in translation and to read books about language, which I thought was really cool. And since one of my goals for the year was to read more women in translation, this just seemed like the perfect way to get some books read for that. Um, I am Team Polyglot, which has three prompts, and then there are additionally three kind of bonus prompts that you can try to tackle. The first prompt for Team Polyglot is to read an Asian novel in translation, and I knew straight away which book I wanted to use for this one, and it is Breasts and Eggs by Miyako Kawakami. And this book has been on my radar for some time. And I think it was put there first by the Reading Women podcast, because I think they spoke about it on there. And then also Katrina Balf, who plays Claire Frazier in Outlander, has an IG book club that I think she started during the pandemic and lockdown, and she also covered it there. So it's kind of been everywhere for me. But I also just liked the concept of it. So it is translated from Japanese, and it is a book about womanhood in modern day Japan. And I think the breasts part of the title has to do with women's bodies and body image and conformity and just beauty standards in general. And then the eggs part I think actually has to do with fertility and having children or being childless, childless and that sort of thing. So I'm very interested to read this one. I think it will be fabulous because to be quite honest, I have not heard a single bad thing about it. The next prompt for Team Polyglot is to read a book with a bilingual protagonist. And I've chosen Disobedience by Naomi Alderman. Fun fact one, this is the same Naomi Alderman who wrote The Power. And actually I think this is her debut novel. And fun fact too, this was actually adapted into a movie a couple of years ago with Rachel Weisz, who appears on this channel all the time apparently, and also Rachel McAdams. And I believe that the protagonist would speak both Yiddish and English, and may even read Hebrew. The book is about the bisexual daughter of a rabbi within this Orthodox Jewish community in England. The main character, Ranit, or Rani as I believe she goes by, has left the community some time ago to kind of create a career for herself, and she only returns upon the death of her father, and while she's there it's a book that's really exploring what her presence does to the kind of fabric of the society that she was raised in with these religious and cultural aspects to it. Um, I really enjoyed the movie and found it particularly fascinating, so I'm very interested in reading this book as well. And then for prompt three, you're to read historical fiction in translation. So I'm going to read Abigail by Magda Zabo, and I'm actually using this book to cover a couple of the bonus prompts as well. So there's one to read YA in translation, which this is, and there's another to read a book translated from a European language, and this is translated from Hungarian. Hungary is in Europe, so there you have it. But I'm actually really looking forward to giving this a try for a couple of reasons. The first being that I read one of Magda Zabo's other books last year and really enjoyed it. It was The Door. But this is apparently her novel that is most popular in her native Hungary. 
and so I'm really interested to see how this is different. Um, it's also interesting to me because I see it described as YA, but it was written in the 1970s, which I feel like is before YA became like a designation, but I think the age of the characters, like retroactively, they've decided it's YA. It's about this young girl who gets sent away to a boarding school during World War II, and she seems to be a bit of a rebel, or at least far more rebellious than this religious institution likes, and so she has a lot of issues there. But apparently there is this legend behind a statue on the grounds of the boarding school that if you ask it for help, you will get the help you need. And so I'm thinking that this might have elements of magical realism in it as well, this seems like a such a departure from the door because of all of those things, but I'm looking forward to reading it because I did really like the writing style of the door. So hopefully, although the subject matter and everything is very different, I still get a lot of that same feel from the reading of it. So there you have it. And then there is one other bonus prompt, which is to read a book that includes a dialect. And I couldn't think of any off the top of my head, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that one of these books that I mentioned will have a dialect in it. If not, maybe one of the books that I'm reading for the Mythathon, which is a wonderful segue into the Mythathon TBR. <laughs> So, as I said already, I will have put all the information on the Mythathon in the description box, but this was really exciting to me because this round of the Mythathon, at least, I think it's round four, is inspired by a Thorian legend, which I really enjoy. So much like the Linguathon, there are teams. You select a team, which gives you your first prompt, and then the other, I think, 12 prompts have to do with King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, and then there's one prompt for Camelot. So there are quite a few prompts to cover, and I have tried to be as strategic as possible with these books. I think almost all of them work for at least one other prompt, and in some cases they might even triple or quadruple dip. So being very strategic here. So for the Mythathon, I've chosen Team Nimu, or Lady of the Lake as she's more commonly known, and for that prompt you're supposed to read a book that's set at sea. So I've chosen The German Girl by Armando Lucas Coria. I'm butchering that. I don't speak Spanish. Let's just put that out there, so please correct me. So to be quite honest, this book has been moldering on my bookshelf for far too long, and I don't know why, because it really is up my alley. It's a book that explores World War II, and it does so by exploring a facet of World War II that I've never seen covered in historical fiction before, during that time period at least. So the main character seems to be a young girl whose family manages to escape Berlin, and travels aboard an ocean liner, ocean liner to Havana, Cuba. That's new to me, and I'm really interested in learning a bit more about that. Um, so the book seems to really cover World War II, also cover the revolution in Cuba that happens, I believe, shortly thereafter, and there seems to be a dual plot line that's more contemporaneous, which has to do with New York City around the time of September 11th. So there's a lot to unpack here, but it's all really interesting to me. Things that I either lived through in the case of 9-11 or things that I'm interested in learning more about. So that's that. I'm also using this book for the Sir Galahad prompt, which is to read a book that's title begins with a G. So obviously. There you have it. So on to King Arthur and the Knights of the Round table prompts. So for the King Arthur prompt, it's to read a book that features royalty, and I've chosen The Lady Elizabeth by Alison Weir, which I'm really excited about. It has been a hot minute since I've read anything by Alison Weir, and when I was kind of going back into the catalog of books that I've read in my brain, I honestly could not think of a novel by Alison Weir that I've read. 
I've read her nonfiction, but even that was probably back when I was in high school. So I am very excited to try one of her novels. And this one is about Queen Elizabeth, except this seems to be set before she becomes queen. So I think it actually kind of parallels part of the timeline that is in that movie called Elizabeth with Kate Blanchett from 1999 or 2000. Essentially, Anne Boleyn has been beheaded. Henry VIII has reduced Elizabeth's status, so she's no longer Princess Elizabeth, and rather she's Lady Elizabeth, and she's dealing with being raised by nannies and governesses and that sort of thing. And then her father dies, and her stepsister, Bloody Mary, ascends to the throne. And so all of the, I assume, intrigue and danger to Elizabeth's life, because she obviously has a claim to the throne of England as well. I'm really interested in this because Queen Elizabeth I is one of my historical girl crushes, so this should be really interesting. I'm also using this book for the Sir Gawain prompt, which is to read a book that has green on the cover or green in the title, so obviously. But yeah, I am really excited about this one. It's been a long time since I've read anything in Tudor England, and this should be fascinating. So for the next prompt, which is Sir Lancelot, it's to read a book by your favorite author. If you subscribe to my channel, you probably already know who the author is. If you don't, welcome and just know that my favorite author is Sarah Waters. And I've chosen to read Affinity by Sarah Waters, obviously. And this book is Killing Two Birds with One Stone because it was also on my spring TBR. And I am super jazzed about it. It is a gothic novel. It's set during Victorian England. And it seems like the protagonist is a woman born into the sort of wealthier class in England. And she does what a lot of wealthy or well-to-do women do during this period of time is to do charity work. And she decides that her charity work is going to be visiting the most notorious prison in England or London at the time, and she becomes interested in one of the inmates. I am really looking forward to this. And usually with Sarah Waters books, there is an LGBTQ plus storyline. So I'm kind of wondering if that happens between the protagonist and this inmate. I will report back. But yeah, that's that's what I'm reading for that prompt. For the Sir Percival prompt, which is to read a book with a shiny cover, I've selected A Bend in the Stars by Rachel Berenbaum, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there are these little silver stars that sparkle on the front cover, and I don't know how I haven't gotten to this book yet. I think, or at least suspect, that part of it is because I keep mistaking this book for The Silence of the Girls. The spines are a very similar blue color and I think I just keep mixing them up but this book is just such a me book it is historical fiction it is set in Russia during the outbreak of World War One there's nothing about that that doesn't speak to me on some level so the main characters are these two really brilliant siblings one, I believe her name is Mary or Miri, is like the only female surgeon in Russia at the time or on track to be that. And her brother Vanya is basically racing, again, racing against Einstein to figure out the theory of relativity. And so the book is really grappling with the war and also talking about modern science, or at least their modern science, since we've come a long way since then. But I just don't know why I haven't gotten to this book yet. It sounds really interesting. I like this modern science angle. It's apparently inspired by an eclipse that happened during this time period as well. So we'll see how it goes. But it it's just a book that me, 
who reads basically everything set in Russia should have gotten to it already. So I'm going to get to it this this month. And I'm also using it for two other prompts, which makes it even more an imperative to read this. So I'm using it for the Sir K prompt, which is to read a book with a significant sibling relationship, and also for the Camelot bonus prompt, which is to read a book about a place you've never visited, and as much as I've studied Russian history and love the literature, I have not visited Russia at this point in my life. One day, though, it's on my bucket list. <laughs> or the Sir Bors prompt, which is to read a sequel. I've chosen A Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gabaldon, which is book two in the Outlander series. I read book one for the second time in February, I think, and book two and book three were both on my spring TBR. So again, killing two birds with one stone here, but this book picks up where book one left off, obviously, and Claire and Jamie are trying to stop the Jacobite Rebellion from happening. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this because I love Outlander. I love the book. I love the TV series. And it's just a fun time. I'm also using this book for the Sir Tristan prompt, which is to read a book with a romance that should be legendary. And Jamie and Claire are an OTP for me. And to be honest, fans of the TV series and or the book stand them as a couple. So they might already have a legendary status, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna commit and that's another prompt that I'm covering for this one as well. Oh my god, I just realized there's a dialect in Amber... Oh. <laughs> I literally... You have just witnessed a brainwave live. Well, live. But I just realized a dragonfly in Amber would have a dialect in it because of the Scottish dialect and accent and all of that that happened in the book. So that book would also cover the final bonus prompt in the Linguathon Readathon. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is great. So it is, we'll get it off my spring TBR. We're using it for two prompts for the Mythathon, and we're using it for a prompt in the Linguathon. Like, amazing. I'm so stoked. Anyway, we're gonna move on. <laughs> so the next prompt is Sir Lemorak. And I don't remember Sir Lamarack being a knight at the round table, which makes him perfect for this prompt, which is to read a book that is underhyped. And I've gone with Cocaine Blues by Carrie Greenwood, which this is one of the books in the Franny Fisher mystery series. And I love the TV show, like Miss Fisher's murder mysteries. I have watched probably a dozen times straight through all three seasons. Like, it is my comfort TV show. I just enjoy it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's fun. It's cozy and comfortable and just great. And Rosie over at Rosie Kaksha actually did a whole video talking about why the Franny Fisher murder mysteries books are cozy for her. And she just sold me on needing to read one of these books. So this is book one in the series, I believe. And I'm just really excited about it. I don't know a ton about the plot, but I'm still really intrigued. And to be quite honest, the only person other than Rosie who I've heard speak about this book is, is an Australian bookstagrammer that she and I have like spoken about the books and the series a little bit when the movie was coming out a couple years ago, but that's really it. So it seems like it is underhyped and I'm very much looking forward to finally reading the book and seeing if the book meets my very high expectations based on the TV series. Oh, and I'm also using this for the Sir Gareth prompt, which is to read a book that was recently added to your TBR, and this book literally arrived like two days ago from when I'm filming, so definitely counts. <laughs> so for the last two prompts, which are Sir Bedivere to read a book with something pointy on the cover, 
and also Sargeras, which is to listen to an audiobook or read part of a book aloud. I've actually chosen a nonfiction called All the Single Ladies by Rebecca Traster or Traster. And this is about the phenomenon of the single woman. And apparently today only 20% of Americans are married by the age of 29, compared to nearly 60% in 1960. And this phenomenon, the cultural shift, the societal changes that this has brought about really intrigued me because I fit into that category. I am 31 and unmarried, don't have any plans to marry anytime soon, to be honest don't know if that is something that really interests me all that much. But as far as looking at a sort of cultural and social analysis of this, I'm intrigued and I really only discovered it because I was scrolling through the Libby app at the time, but Lady Liberty is on the cover and her crown is definitely pointy, so that's what we're gonna go with for that, those two prompts. <laughs> So yeah, those are the books that I plan to read for the Linguathon and the Mythathon, and I'm very excited about it, but even with my double, triple, and quadruple dipping with prompts for these, I still have like 10 books that I need to get through. And as of right now, only one of them is an audiobook. I think I might try to listen along with the German girl, maybe, so that might help me out a little bit there, but it's still a lot of reading to get done this month. A lot of fun reading, but still a lot, so keep me in your thoughts. <laughs> but as always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're taking part in either of these readathons, definitely let me know and let me know what team you're on. And if not these readathons, let me know what other readathons you might be taking part in or books that you're excited about reading in the month of April. Again, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and I will chat with you later. Bye!